Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, today we will formally start the course and I will start with uh, module 1. The module 1 is about introduction of geometrical optics and ray theory, Fermat principle, refraction from single and double interfaces. Today we will talk about introduction of geometrical optics and a part of ray theory. Now what is a weave? Then uh, this questions brings some oscillations in our, in our mind. Uh, whenever we say wave, then the waves in a sea appears to mind, the way we, uh, when we wave our hand holding a rope, then this appears to, uh, to our mind. Then the, the most uh, basic definition would be wave is a disturbance. This is the shortest and best definition. Okay? But firmly, if you want to bind uh, uh, these words in a in a best possible way, then it would be uh, like this. A uh, classical traveling wave is a self-sustaining disturbance of a medium, which moves through space, transporting energy and momentum. Okay. Now these waves are of two types. The first one is mechanical wave. Sound is the best example of the mechanical wave and second is electromagnetic waves where our visible light falls. Okay. Now mechanical wave, they re these waves require medium to propagate and these waves are subdivided further as longitudinal wave and transverse wave. In longitudinal wave, the medium is displaced in the direction of the motion of the wave sound waves propagating in air comes in this category. Okay. When we speak, then contraction and rarification of air happens and through this contraction and rarification, this sound energy propagates and then it goes to our ears, then it re resonates with our eardrum and then we hear the sound. Now the second uh, kind is this uh, transverse wave, in transverse wave, medium is displaced in a direction perpendicular to that of the motion of the wave. You, if you drop a cork ball in water, the dropping of pebble will generate water waves and this surface wave will make the water move up and down and this pro wave propagate uh, radially outward. And if you drop a water uh, cork ball, then this, uh, you will see that due to this movement of the wave, the cork moves up and down slowly and this represents that the medium is displaced in a direction which is perpendicular to the motion of the wave. The wave is moving uh, radially outward in the water at the water surface and the cork ball is moving up and down. This is an example of a transverse mechanical waves. Now coming to the electromagnetic uh, waves which is uh, what we will be studying about in, uh, in this course. These waves do not require any medium. Since there is no association of the medium, the wave will propagate with a very high speed. And this is why the speed of electromagnetic wave, wave is very huge and which is generated by, uh, which is uh, uh, described, uh, are, uh, which is represented by C and its value is, value in uh, vacuum is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Okay? And as I said, disturbance advances, not the medium. And since this medium does not necessarily require a medium, it propagates very fast. 
Now, whenever we say wave, this harmonic wave comes into our mind, the sinusoidal wave comes into our mind and all types of waves are represented by some wave function and this wave function is given by this expression psi, psi is the wave function and this wave function psi is function of position, position variable x and time variable t. Now, this wave function at t is equal to 0 would be represented by psi as a function of x. Since it is a harmonic uh, wave or since it is a sinusoidal wave, generally we can write it as a sin k x. Okay? Now, you may ask that initially there was no k, how come k is appearing, how come a is appearing? A represents amplitude of the wave. Okay. Now, the insertion of k is necessary. Why? Then, uh, if you take sin of x, then that this would be uh, not allowed. Why? Because x is a dimensional quantity, x is distance, x is length and you cannot take sin of uh, some dimension, dimensional variable you will have to make it dimension less. And how to make uh, this x dimension less? You will have to multiply x with 1 by length unit. Therefore, k will have unit of 1 by length and this makes k x a dimensionless quantity and once it is dimensionless, you, we can easily take sin of this uh, quantity and we will have something. Okay? It is uh, now allowed. And therefore, we can see that a sin k x is a function which is x dependent, x is a variable here. Now, if you vary x and see how does psi look, then you will uh, find this type of curve which is given in blue here. This is a sinusoidal curve. Now, the general expression for a wave is a sin k x. Okay? But we know that a wave moves in a space okay? and since a wave is moving, it must be having some velocity. Okay? All short of wave are represented by some wave function and these wave functions, this evolution of the waves uh, is governed by a certain type of mathematical expression which we call wave equation. And what is the form of wave equation? Wave equation is represented like this. This is the wave equation, this, this is a differential equation which is uh, linear homogeneous second order partial differential equation. Okay? It is a linear homogeneous second order partial differential equation and all kinds of wave function obey this second order partial differential equation. They constitute the solution of this equation. Okay? Now, as we discussed before, since a wave is moving, therefore, ve velocity v must appear in the expression of wave function. How to uh, insert the expression of velocity in the expression? Just by re replacing x by x minus v t, v is, v is the velocity and this x minus v t will now introduce the expression of velocity into the wave expression. Now, in this expression, if you replace x by x minus v t, then you, we will get this, okay, which is a function of x and t both now. Okay. Now, the resultant wave function will look like a sin k x minus v k t. And this 
is sinusoidal both in space and time. This expression is periodic both in space and time. Okay. Since there is a periodicity in space, we can define or we can name this period and in spatial domain, this spatial period is known as wavelength and this wavelength is expressed by a Greek letter lambda. Okay. As I said, the wave repeat itself after lambda. Therefore, if you add or subtract lambda in x, the resultant expression would be unaltered. Okay. If you add or subtract lambda in x, it would not cause any variation into the resultant expression. Okay. Now, we know that psi is a harmonic uh, function, the wave function is harmonic and by uh, adding or subtracting lambda, there is uh, no variation in the expression. Then what we can do is that we will write this wave function and then we will add and subtract lambda in this. Okay. And we also know that in the expression of sin, in the argument, if we add or subtract 2 pi, this will also not cause any variation. This will also not alter the argument of the sine function. Therefore, this would be equivalent to sin k x minus vt plus minus 2 pi because sine is a cyclic function. If you add 2 pi in its phase, it would come again to its original value. Therefore, this should not make any variation in the resultant function. Now, if you compare the argument of the two, then we will find that mod of k is lambda is equal to 2 pi. What is lambda? Lambda is a spatial period which is uh, having the dimension of length and which will of course be a positive quantity. quantity. What is k? k is a uh, parameter which is having the dimension of 1 by length, inverse of a length. Therefore, it would also be a positive quantity. Therefore, we can safely remove this mod and therefore, we can write k as 2 pi by lambda. Lambda is having the dimension of length, therefore, k would be having the dimension of inverse of a length, okay, which is uh, aligned with uh, the initial definition of the k. Okay. And this k is called wave number. Okay. Now, since the wave function is periodic both in space and time and here we have studied uh, the spatial periodicity, let us now analyze the temporal periodicity. Now, let us assume that temporal period is tau, tau is the temporal period. It means the wave takes tau time for completing one cycle. Okay. Now, after now, if you add r subtract tau in time, then you should also end up uh, through the same expression because uh, tau is the time period in time or periodicity in time. Therefore, we will just uh, applying the same analogy what we have used in case of uh, spatial analysis. Sin k x minus v t would be equivalent to sin k x minus v t plus minus tau. And since it is a sinusoidal function, this would be equivalent to adding plus minus 2 pi. Upon comparing these two arguments, we will get mod of k v tau is equal to 2 pi. Again, k is a positive number as we, we have already discussed. Tau is time, positive quantity, v is positive number. Therefore, we will get k v tau is equal to 2 pi k v tau is equal to 2 pi. Now, in the last slide we saw k is equal to 2 pi by lambda. Substituting for k leads to this expression which is 2 pi by lambda v into tau is equal to 2 pi. And from here we can get the expression, expression for tau which is time period. Okay. Therefore, in equation 13 we see that tau can be defined as the ratio between lambda and v, the ratio 
of lambda 2v gives the expression for tau and the inverse of tau defines temporal frequency nu. Okay. I would also like to mention here is that k is also called spatial frequency. Okay, and inverse of tau is our temporal frequency. Okay, once temporal frequency is defined, now tau is measured with uh, tau is time, it is measured in seconds, hours and so on. Now, if tau is measured in second, then the unit of nu is hertz, which is inverse of second. Now, from equation 13, which is in our last slide, where tau is lambda by v, we can write velocity v is equal to nu into lambda. Nu is our temporal frequency and lambda is the wavelength. Okay, this is a very important relation. Now, apart from uh, these term, uh, another very important uh, term is angular frequency, which is often uh, used in um, optics. And how angular frequency is defined? It is analogous to k. Angular frequency is defined by inverse of tau, but it has two pi term in the numerator. Okay, omega is defined as 2 pi by tau and we know that 1 by tau is equal to nu, nu therefore, we can write omega is equal to 2 pi nu. Okay, now, we have so many definitions, we defined k which is wave vector, we defined omega which is angular frequency, therefore, we can write the initial expression this uh, psi is equal to a sin k x minus v t in terms of k and omega. Okay. Now, if you write it in terms of k and omega, then the final expression of the wave function would be like this a sin k x minus plus omega t. Okay. What does plus and minus represent? Plus and minus represents the direction of the wave, if it is propagating in uh, whether it is propagating in positive at x direction or it, it is propagating in minus uh, x direction. It, is defined or taken care of this minus and plus symbol. Now, here we see that this wave function have only one frequency omega and such a wave is called monochromatic wave, okay. a wave which has only one frequency single frequency is called monochromatic wave, but in practice it is impossible to have a monochromatic wave all the waves have certain bandwidth and these waves are called polychromatic wave. Okay. But if this bandwidth is very narrow, then uh, these wave is very close to be a monochromatic one and these are called pseudo monochromatic. Now, once we have defined all this, we can move on defining phase. What is phase? Now, the argument associated with the sign function is called phase. Okay? And uh, if we want to uh, uh, understand it figuratively, then if you, you plot a sign function, then this is the type of the plot which we get. Okay, we see that the sign function is start with the 0, it is a 0 here on the horizontal axis. Then we see that the sign function is start from exactly from 0 and therefore, we can say that phase here is 0, but sometimes a wave may start from not from 0, but from certain value which is not equal to 0 okay, and this decides the phase what is the value at the beginning here. But more accurately, phase is a relative concept. It is always measured with respect to some reference value. 
like here in this first case the reference value is 0. Okay. Here the reference value is again 0, but there is a deviation here. Okay. And then you can see that this is deviated by pi by 2 and therefore, the phase here would be pi by 2. Okay. Anyway, let us go with the definition of uh, phase here. The phase phi here is defined as k x minus omega t. Now, at t and x is equal to 0, we can define the wave function which would be 0 because when, when both x and t are 0, the sinusoidal function would be 0 and therefore, the wave function would be 0. Okay, therefore, we can see that phase plays a very important role here. Now, when both x and t is equal to 0, then this correspond to this point the wave function itself is 0 which is here, but here when phase is equal to pi y 2 the wave function has certain non-zero value. Okay. But generally in addition to k x minus omega t there is some extra term epsilon people write along with this k x minus omega t which is called initial phase because when both x and t is equal to 0 the wave should look like this. But sometimes what happens is that even at x and t is equal to 0, waves start from this point and here it means that some non-zero phase is there at the beginning. This non-zero phase is uh, represented by this epsilon, this non-zero phase is also here. Okay, once we know what a phase is, what a wave, uh, uh, what is uh, omega is, what a k is, now let us define phase velocity. Now, we have this expression of phase phi which is k x minus omega t. Now, let us take time derivative of uh, this phase keeping x constant. If we take time derivative of phase keeping x constant, then since phi is equal to k x minus omega t, k x minus omega t, then del phi by del t would be equal to minus of omega because we are keeping k sorry x constant and if you take the mod of this then you will get omega this is what is being represented here. Similarly, if you take the space derivative of phi keeping time constant now then you will get k from the same expression this expression. Okay. Now, if you divide this and this this is coming here in the numerator this is in the denominator then we will get del x by del t at constant phi. This quantity is called phase velocity and this repre represents speed of propagation of the constant phase. Now, if now we know that phi is equal to omega t minus k x or k x minus omega t and if you take the time derivative uh, uh, of uh, this quantity then and keeping phi constant yeah the here it says that uh, we are taking time derivative of x and phi is kept constant okay and if you treat phi as a constant and take the derivative of this phi with respect to time this then the this term would be zero here you will get omega and here you will get minus k and from here you can calculate del x by del t at constant phi which would be equal to plus minus omega by k and this is defined as velocity or phase velocity. Now, here we can also talk about the refractive index what is index of refraction? Usually people define refractive index n as c the speed of uh, light in vacuum by v speed of light in a certain medium and this ratio gives index of refraction or refractive index. The v which is used here is this v the phase velocity. Okay, and this definition is valid as long as our wave is monochromatic. 
Okay. Now, now suppose we have uh, more than one waves or we have more than one wave functions which overlap in a space, then what will happen? What would be the resultant of this? This would be decided by superposition principle and this principle says that if psi 1 and psi 2 represents two separate solutions of the wave equation or if psi 1 and psi 2 are two wave functions, then psi 1 plus psi 2 is also a solution of wave equation or we can say that if psi 1 and psi 2 are two disturbances which are overlapping in space, then the resultant disturbances would be the addition of the two and this is what is being written here. The resultant disturbance, disturbance at each point in the region of overlap is the algebraic sum of the individual constituent waves at that location. Now, here this is uh, what is written here is shown schematically with the blue color we saw a uh, wave function psi 1 and with the uh, orange color we saw a wave function psi 2, the wave function psi 1 is here, wave function um, uh, psi 2 is here and with this yellow color the resultant is being expressed. Now, we see that resultant is sum of psi 1 and psi 2 okay. and we see that all these waves start they, 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 they are in phase in what I mean by saying that the waves are in phase. In phase means the crest and trough of these wave come at the same time all these waves start from 0, the initial phase is 0 here and they passes through their maxima and minima simultaneously. But if we consider the opposite case, then what will happen is shown here in this diagram. Again the blue curve represents the wave function psi 1, the wave function psi 2 is given by this color and the yellow cor color represents the resultant. Now here you see what you see is that the blue color and this uh, red color is opposite in phase and therefore they cancel out and the therefore the resultant which is given by this yellow color is of very low amplitude while here the resultant is of very high am amplitude. It means the resultant will always depend upon the relative phase of the waves which are overlapping in time or which are overlapping in a space. Okay, this is all uh, sup what superposition principle tells. Now, it is uh, while doing mathematics, it is always uh, very easy to move to complex domain. Therefore, in this slide we will learn how to represent a wave function in complex uh, representation. Now, we know that uh, any complex number can be expressed as x plus i y where x is a real part, y is imaginary part okay, and i is iota which is equal to square root of minus 1. In polar coordinate this can equivalently be written as r in bracket cos theta plus i sin theta. Okay and this can equivalently be uh, written uh, this cos theta plus i sin theta be written as e to the power i theta this all we know. Therefore, a uh, complex number which is uh, expressed by z tilde it can be uh, written as r e to the power i theta and which would be equal to r cos theta plus i r sin theta. If you want to calculate the absolute value or the modulus of uh, this complex number then you have to take the mod and uh, um, this mod will uh, be equal to r, r is modulus of z tilde. Now, how to calculate complex conjugate? Now, to calculate complex conjugate you will have to just replace iota by minus iota. Therefore, here at the in the exponent i is removed replaced by minus i and here in this uh, form uh, i is again replaced by minus i this represents the complex conjugate of z tilde. Now, uh, 
j tilde which is a complex number it, as I said before it consists of a real part and the imaginary part the real of uh, j tilde is expressed as x and imaginary of j tilde is y. Now with these informations we can write uh, our wave function in complex note form. How to write this? We know that our wave function is expressed as a sin kx minus omega t or psi is equal to a sin omega t minus kx. The uh, minus sign will just uh, alter the phase. Okay? This is a real part. If you plot it, you will see some variation here. But how to go to the complex domain? We will follow this that a complex number can be represented as r cos theta plus iota into r sin theta. Okay, and then once uh, cos theta, sin theta and r is known, then everything can go into a complex notation which is r e to the power i theta. Okay, and the real part of this complex number is r cos theta which will represent our wave function. Okay, knowing this, we can represent our wave function here. We have a e to the power i omega t minus k x plus epsilon which is our wave function which is written in exponent complex form. But the imaginary part of wave function, function does not hold any significance. It is the real part which is of our interest. Therefore, we put r e here. The real part of a e to the power i omega t minus k x plus epsilon will represent the wave function. Epsilon is some arbitrary phase. If you take the real part of a to the power i omega t minus kx plus epsilon, you will get cosine function and this is which you will get uh, cos omega t minus kx plus epsilon. Now uh, this is all for today. Now in the next class, we will uh, move further in the module 1 and uh, we will learn about uh, the ray theory and then uh, Fermat principle. Thank you.